when you're assaulted. Can you see my face? Yes. <laughs> Ryan's letting me use his computer because I'm... Um... Well, I don't. Ha I guess I don't have Skype on my computer. Oh, gotcha. I have to get something out of the way. I was pulling the kids in the wagon and um, the kids that I babysit. And um, I felt something snap, and I turned around, and I didn't see anything, but then I later realized that my bracelet was gone. Oh, no. And it was on, like, a really busy street called Sheridan. Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> so sad. No, I was really for, for a little while. You look like you have a great DVD collection. I do. Um, I have two little sisters, so... We have about 15 Barbie movies up there. Oh, okay. It's really fun. Is that Hercules over there? Uh, this one? No, it's... Oh, I guess I can't really point to it. <laughs> you want to get started? Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Okay, uh, I've gotten some from people on Twitter, and some are just mine. <laughs> All right, so, okay. number one... How did you initially come to work with StarKid in Little White Lie? In Little White Lie? Yeah. Um, well, um, I did, when I was a little freshman, um, that's when they did The Hobbit. It was Nick and Eric directed The Hobbit, and um, I auditioned for that, and I got to be in that. So I'd worked with them before, and then they were doing Little White Lie, and they knew I was going to be around for the summer, so they were like, do you and some of your friends want to do Little White Lie, and I said, yeah, and so, um, I have a bunch of my high school friends who are in it, like, my best friend, Mar, she's in Love Grenade, she's the female, and then, um, one of my other best friends, Tony, he's also in Love Grenade, he's, like, the lead singer, and, um, one of my really good friends, Amy, she's, she's in it, too, like, she stands with me when I'm talking about how Kevin got into the coma or whatever she's like the cool blonde girl and anyway it was really fun i got to be with like all my friends all the time um they needed a lot of extras too so like my one of my best friends brad is in a lot of high school people were in it they were home for the summer because you know i'm kind of from ann arbor so we all got to be in it together it was super fun is this where i'm looking am i looking into your eyes does it look like yes no yeah oh. <laughs> what made you come back and do starship well, I moved to Chicago um, two years ago and was here doing some comedy and all that stuff. And then um, and then they all moved here. And so it was really exciting. And then they were going to put on that show and they were like, we think we want you to be a robot. And I said, all right, cool. That sounds really good. Um, so it just really worked out. Perfect. Yeah. And Denise... Denise, who played February, is another high school friend. They're just, you know, my some of my high school friends just really go well with these guys, so. <laughs> um, yeah, world's colliding, I guess. I'm yeah. looking at Brian things in his desk. Here's one thing. It's a high school musical keychain. Yeah, he's got some, some cards, and here's, he's got a pocket knife, so. Cool. StarKid obviously had a pretty, like, efficient system going, um, well, efficient, because of working on lots of musicals together, and was it, like, hard to integrate yourself into that, or was it just because you were friends with them, was it not bad at all? Well, no. They have, um, they have a specific way of, of doing things, but I was pretty used to it by them. I also, um directed a musical which had a lot of star kids in it back in in college which was called a goofy movie musical and, <laughs> and matt lang played goofy principal <laughs> it was so amazing but uh we're all just used with each other you know a lot of the um actors and all these shows i've been in plays with 
you know, all through college. So really the only thing you have to get used to is, you know, Matt's directing, but we all know him so well, it's like pretty easy to... All right, if you could choose either acting or stand-up comedy for a career, which one would it be and why? Definitely acting. Um, stand-up is so scary. No matter how many times you do it, it's still so scary. And um, I, I was kind of just pushed into to stand-up comedy. And then I thought, I really want to focus on doing this and getting better. So for my first eight months here, that's all I did was stand-up and, like, you know, some sketches and stuff. But really, that's all I did. <laughs> and then I realized, wait, now I want to be an actor. Um... So, I don't know, it's hard when you like so many things. You kind of start to miss them when you're doing other ones. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. The stand-up that you have on YouTube is hilarious, by the way. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> I really like the uh, Midnight Poop one. Yeah, that's Sebastian. <laughs> I just hang out with him all the time. Today yeah. he... Uh, we were eating some blueberries and hanging out, and he was, like, got on this thing where um, he got really serious, and he was like, do you poop in the toilet? I'm never going to be your boyfriend. That's so gross. And he wouldn't stop. And then he'd start getting and go, he. And then he'd come and, like, clear his plate from the table, and he's like, you're so disgusting. I heard you poop in the toilet. <laughs> where, where else would you... What, I, <laughs> He loves poop. He loves talking about it. He loves joking about it. Yeah, he likes to poop. Okay. Speaking, speaking of the children that you nanny for, um, in like that one video, the parents were there listening to, to it. What was their reaction to that? I've always been kind of curious. They love it. Those two, Mich um, Michelle and Scott, they're really funny, and they love stand-up, and I always run my ideas by them first to make sure that, like, it's okay, and they're always like, yeah, have fun, pretty crazy. That's awesome. And, um, yeah, they're, they're really fun. We're really close, and they're super silly, crazy people, <laughs> so they like it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, was kind of, I was kind of worried about that, actually, so that's good. <laughs> have a great time. Like, she, like, wants to, she's like, we need to make you t-shirts with quotes on them. Oh and so, I'm like, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> but, uh, she likes that kind of stuff. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, Brian got some aloe, I've noticed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, a lot of people that I talked to in preparation with questions wanted to know about the Mega Hero character and how you, like, came up with and did like the voice and the sound effects and movements and stuff? Um, well, my brother, his name is David, and um, we used to do robot voice all the time at the dinner table just to bug my parents, and um, we we just started to master it. You know, you like when you're a kid and you play with those toys, and like you would, we had a computer game called Dr. Shivago where you would type in a problem. And the doctor would then, like, read it and then tell you what you should do. It was, like, a computer thing. And so it'd be, like, of course we would type in really silly stuff, like, my poopy has turned green and I am wondering why. And, like, you know, he would be, like, your poopy is probably green because you are eating blueberries. And we had this really intense version of it. And, like, Nick and Matt, um, like, the, the, like, the robot voice a lot, so they wanted to put it in, but then we had to tame it down a lot for Mega Girl so that people could understand it, because sometimes robot can get a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. And then I had to also learn to, like, not... First, I, I couldn't smile, I wasn't allowed to smile. I had to learn to not move, you know, which is tough, because I'm pretty loosey-goosey. And I don't really move like a robot at all, so that took a long time. And um, I had to build up my muscles. <laughs> and just, you know, whatever. Start, <laughs> start turning my insides into metal and, like, right. you know, typical stuff. What is your personal favorite Starkid production? Um, I was just talking about this the other day. I really loved when they did Lord of the Rings back in college, which you guys haven't seen, but it was so funny. They had some of the best jokes in it ever. Like, 
like Ryan at one point was really sad, but instead of singing a sad song, he was like, I smell six and candy, yeah. And he sang that song for five That was such a good joke. Um, and it had a bunch of really good buddies in it, too, so. That was my favorite. I mean, I laughed so hard during all those shows. I didn't get to see me and my dick live, which was sad, but the two Harry Potters, you can hear me laughing pretty low. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll have to go back and listen for you in the background. <laughs> Loudest of <laughs> laughing. Alright, what was the best part of working on Starship? Um, hanging out with buds all the time. We did a lot of well, I had a full-time job, so I didn't get to, you know, hang as much as everybody else. Like, everyone would be like, let's go to IHOP. I'd be like, I'm going to go shut down my body. I'm sorry. But um, but on the weekends, we had a ton of fun. And, um, you know, getting to know June, the costume girl, she's super cool. And, like, getting to have Angela around. She was our stage manager, and she's one of my best friends and it was so exciting that she got to come and do this because she lives in New York and I miss her. Um, so, yeah, I mean, everything was fun. Getting to know everybody, being silly backstage. It's always fun. Pretty much it. Do you envision coming back and working with StarKid for future projects? Yeah, I hope so. Um, I... They're, I don't know what they're going to do next. I don't know where they're going to do it. But if they stay here in Chicago, then yeah, for sure. I'm going to um, beg them and, you know what I mean, like pay them some money and bribe them, do whatever. <laughs> whatever it takes. You know. What is your favorite Mega Girl moment? Hmm. Um... I always like it when Mega Girl falls in love with Tootsie, obviously. <laughs> um, I also like it when she sticks up for Tootsie to Junior. Um, yeah, I just like it when she finally has a heart and then realizes that um, that she's going to be with Tootsie forever. My feet just sounded like a heart, but I didn't fart. It was my feet on the chair. <laughs> I didn't even hear it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, completely unrelated question. Um, what Hogwarts house do you think you'd be sorted into? I, I think I'd be a Hufflepuff. I'm not brave enough to um, be Gryffindor. I'm probably not smart enough to be Ravenclaw. But uh, I think Hufflepuff, like a good kind of in-between. I like hanging out with buddies a lot. You know, that's like, I feel what Hufflepuffs are all about. <laughs> all right, these questions are from people on Twitter. Um, Rachel wants to know what you were like in high school. Um, in high school? Wow, Denise and I were just talking about this. Um, we went through so many different phases. When I first got to high school, I had, like, really crooked teeth, and then I got braces, and, um, then I was a braces girl for a while, <laughs> and then, um, and then I went through this phase where I would wear, like, these really long dress, like flowy skirts, like really long ones with like all kinds of jewelry and like big belts. And I had like long curly hair and like this is when I first got my braces off too. So I think I just felt like I was cooler. And um, and uh, then then in junior year, I went through this like phase of wearing of like trying to be a rock and roller, and I wore like hot pink and black all the time. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I wore, really. <laughs> I'm just the same person. Senior year, I think I calmed down. Um, but with the fashion. Um, but yeah, I was pretty much the same person. I was really, really into playing the congas. And I was kind of um, known in the school as like the conga girl. And I would play like, you know, at all the assemblies and like <laughs> jazz band. I played in jazz band. And um, <laughs> that's. That was kind of silly. I also hung out with, like, a really solid group of friends. Denise was a part of that group. And, um, like I was saying, those guys in Little White Lie, they were all um, super silly and funny and nice. So, yeah, we were, we were all kind of comedians. 
I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is from Starkid Superfan. Uh, were you involved in theater when you were younger? If so, what did you do? Yeah, I did. I did for for eight years. I did ballet, and I thought I was really into that, but I really wasn't. And then um, when I was in, when I was in, I also got really. I just was really into performance in general. I really liked. I played piano for a long time and drums, and then theater started when I was in about fifth or sixth grade. That's when I started like deciding like oh wait I want to do theater and then um and I was pretty awkward for a long time but I kind of chugged along and then by the time I was in high school that's when I was doing real plays instead of like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and like (laughs) stuff like that. This is also this is from the same person do you play any instruments besides the bongos? Yeah I played piano for a long time I used to teach piano through high school um, it was classical piano, so I'm not like Clark, who's really hot and really cool and can play like really cool rock and roll tunes. Um, but I used to be really into Beethoven. <laughs> I like went through it's like I went through a Beethoven obsession the way that like some girls feel about Joey Richter. It's like <laughs> <laughs> really how did you decide on the voice you used for Mega Girl? I guess that ties back to the robot thing. Yeah, the guys, you know, liked the robot GPS voice that I did, and then, like I said, I had to tone it down and make it clearer, a little more high-pitched, I guess. A lot of times when I do robot, I'm like, hello, I am a robot. (laughs) Like, you know, that didn't really make sense for a robot female who falls in love. Brian's got some money here, so... This is from Eloise. What do you think of entering into the huge Starkid fan base, and what's it like to have fans? It's been really nice. It's been a lot of fun. I've kind of been an idiot because um, I really don't know much about privacy. So for a long time, I was like accepting people on Facebook and going, yeah. And um, everybody started to get mad at me because photos of them were like floating around everywhere. So I forget that like, you know, (laughs) the Internet is a whole new world because I used to be a huge after Beethoven. um, I was a huge NSYNC fan. So, and I didn't, but we didn't have, like, the internet stuff that you guys have now, you know? I just had to, like, buy Tiger Beat magazine and find out when they were going to be on TV and, like, put a, like, video VCR thing in and, like, video it and record it. And, um, that's, uh, that's all I had, really. But, like, people have so much more access now, so I have to learn to be more private. But, um, I mean, I don't mind sharing things with, like, people, so (laughs) that's why, I don't know. I, I need to learn to do that kind of stuff, I guess, for. But I have a lot of fun. Everybody's super nice. They make me feel really good. And um, they laugh at, like, the silliest things. So <laughs> that makes me feel better. Um, that's one thing you have to worry about is, like, you know, Internet bullying is pretty tough. But nobody really bullies, like, in this fan base. I mean, everybody's pretty nice so far. Wasn't the other day, like, Mary the Steppy and Love Day or something? Yeah, that was so nice. That was so nice. And I was stressed for some reason that day, and then I was like, oh, well. (laughs) It felt so good. This is from Jessica. What do you do with all the props in the set after a show is finished? Um, I think that they're put into storage. Yeah, they are put into storage, because I remember I had my nanny kids around here, and I was like, can I stop by and show them the puppets? And they were like, those are gone. So they're somewhere in storage. There's a few like little puppets and stuff that they have around the house as decoration and, you know, a sweet memory. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it'd be cool to live in it and live in a set, in a spaceship. Did you originally, like, audition for My Girl, or were you, like, approached to play that certain character? Or? Yeah, they, yeah, they, um... They wanted to have a robot in the show, and they wanted to be a female. And they're like, well, you do that robot voice. Um, will you be a robot in the show? And I said, yeah. And then I said, when are you doing it? And they said, now. And I said, I don't know why I even asked. I don't have anything going on. So, yeah. Have you ever been recognized in a random place by a fan? Just once. I was walking with Sebastian, my little nanny kid, and we were, we were going to the post office. And then these girls were, like, selling um, cookies and stuff. 
So Sebastian was like, can I have one? So we went up to buy it, and this girl was like, wait, I, I just went to the Starship screening. And then I said, cool. Yeah, I, d I don't know what to do in those situations. I just said, cool, thanks. <laughs> yeah. She's like, great. Has being a nanny improved your acting skills because with kids you have to act happy all the time, right? And that's from Book Writing Chick. <laughs> that's so true. You do have to act happy because they catch on fast if you're not. And if you're stressed, they know it and they pick on you. <laughs> and so, yeah, you have to, like, I, I greet them every day pretty much with, like, a, hey, you know what I mean? Um, I, I don't know if it's really improved my acting skills um, on the stage. Maybe if I play, like, a really happy character, I'll, I'll be better at it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we have, we have a lot of fun. It, it is true, though. This person must be also a nanny because... You do, you have to act happy, you have to act excited, you have to act like everything they're talking about is cool, even if it's like, alright. <laughs> if they were to do a Harry Potter threequel, would you want to be in it, and what character would you want to play? Um, sure, I'd love to be in it. Um, let me think, what characters do I like from Harry Potter so much that no one has played? Um, uh, oh now I'm nervous. They've, they've hit so many good characters. I mean, I guess I could just um, be a random student who's like... Or I could be that ghost. What's that ghost's name who like lives in the toilet and is so oh, sad? Oh, Voting Myrtle. Yeah, yeah I could be her. That would be funny. <laughs> you know, moan and be a Myrtle. Yeah. This is from Faye O'Toole, and she says, You tweeted Pocahontas lyrics at some point. Would you consider yourself to be a big Disney fan? Oh, yeah, I love Disney. When Angela was here being the stage manager for Starship, she she had um, what was called a Disney vault, and it was just literally a vault full of Disney movies. So we tried to watch so many, but I have a problem with falling asleep during movies. So a lot of times I'd be like, Yeah! And then I'd wake up to the end, and it was really sad. So I need to go back and revisit a lot of them. Like, I didn't really watch a lot of Mulan, because I slept. But then I woke up to the 90 degrees, 98 Degrees song at the end, and that was cool. <laughs> Ryan has arranged his quarters beautifully. Oh, my gosh. This is from Katie, and she says, Pirates or ninjas? Probably pirates. So then you can be out during the day and not the night. Right. That's true. How and why did you get into acting? Um, in sixth grade, I, uh, just, my brother was doing plays, and I was like, well, that looks like fun. And, like I said, I was doing ballet, and, like, you know, I liked being on the stage, but we only got to be on the stage, like, once a year, or, like, twice a year. And, um, it was dancing ballet, so it wasn't the same. So, I, oh, and in fifth grade, we all had to be in this play, and, um, and I got to be Cinderella, but like in an African version of Cinderella. <laughs> so, um, so that was cool. I was like, you know, what? I like this. So then, in sixth grade, that's when you're old enough to start like auditioning for our community theater. So that's what I did. And I was little extra parts, extra roles. I had like glasses and really crooked teeth and like a unibrow. So I was just, like <laughs> this awkward background person. Like, who is your favorite artist and why? Artist, like in general, yeah, probably, probably Billy Joel. I grew up with him, not knowing him, but you know, listening to his music, and um, he was the reason I started playing piano because I wanted to be just like him. I guess I've had a lot of people that I was obsessed with, like Beethoven, Chris Kirkpatrick from Insync, Billy Joel. Billy Joel is like a father figure. Anyway, so. <laughs> Yeah, and I still love him. I got to see him front row senior year of wow. college. Who is your inspiration as a performer? Probably Billy. Billy Joel. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think who else is like a performer. I don't know. I don't know. I don't ever like pay attention to performers. I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. When I was young, Denise, she played February. She's a year older than me, and she was in plays um, with my brother, and she was so cool. She was so funny. She got, like, all the funniest, coolest parts. She was really nice and had, like, tons of friends, and I was like, I really want to be like Denise. 
<laughs> so, um, I feel like she shaped me a lot as a silly person. So, <laughs> I guess I could, I'll say her. Brian has some sanitizer. Keep those hands clean. Do you have a role model outside of performing? Um, my mom and my dad. And, um, I don't know, like my grandma. And, like, <laughs> You know, just like family in general, they're all role models. Um, I really like, I like my boss in college. Um, her name's Callie and she was super cool and like just had her stuff together and knew how to like get involved and be cool. And she was really, um, passionate about acting and directing and stuff. Um, and also making a difference. So she was really cool. And my boss now is really cool, too, and really silly, and she's such a woman, like a fierce woman who, like, leads the world. So I like I like women like that. They're inspirational. The Star Kids all seem to have some really crazy fan stories. Do you have any? No, I don't. No, I don't. I had a man, this isn't a Star Kid fan, but I just did this video once, um... That was on YouTube, and I had some man from, like, Austria, like, you know, add me on Facebook, and this is back when I was like, you yeah, know, okay, and I, like, accepted him, but then I got pretty creepy messages, like, once a week, and, um, he made comments on, their, like, my pictures, and was like, when will we meet? And I'm like, never. Oh my gosh, that's so <laughs> Yeah. Oh. It was weird. That was before Star you guys are mostly girls, so that's nice. That is true. We are yeah. fangirls. <laughs> if you could meet anyone, who would it be? It'd probably be Billy Joel. Um, maybe Tim Gunn. I really like him. Um, yeah, probably one of those two. They're really cool. I'd love to meet him. I think he'd, I think he'd like to meet me, too. I think we'd be good friends. <laughs> Which of the Star Kids have you gotten to know better over the course of Starship? Over the course of Starship? Well, like I was saying, June, the costume designer, I didn't really know her at all beforehand. And then, like, you know, my costume took so long to, like, work on, on my body. So we would just stand there and we had this joke about hamsters. Because um, one night I went bowling and I started calling them hamsters. And nobody thought it was funny. And then the next day I was standing with June. I was like, nobody thinks calling hamsters hamsters is funny. And she's like, I think it's funny. It's actually her birthday right now. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so then we just stood there talking about hamsters and hamsters. We're like, hamsters have little tickle feet and I like it. And that's what we did for an hour while everyone was like rehearsing. We sat in there and she was like sewing my costume together. We're like... I like it when I put my hamster on my belly and I feel it's tickle feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hamsters. What's the best part about being a star kid? Um, hanging with the buzz. This is like exactly what I've always wanted to do with my acting career is do like silly not just sketches, but, like, full-length plays and musicals. I love doing musicals, so... And it's, like, these really comedic roles where, like, the comedians are, like, the front-runners, you know what I mean? As opposed to... Because I've always been cast as, like, you know... Uh-oh. Who are you? I'm still doing the interview. I've shown a lot of things from on your desk. Narrative. <laughs> um, do you need one of those? That's important. All right, cool. I'm gonna wait for him to wait. He's also got um this that's got some kind of notebook. Anyway. <laughs> uh what was I talking about? I don't um, remember. Star Kid. Why it's good to be in Star Kid and oh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's just really fun. It's fun. <laughs> if you could play any role in any other Star Kids show, who would it be and why? Um, like ones they've already done? Yeah. Well, I loved Ariel Goldman's um, owl costume. I'd love to put that on and like, lay in it. So, probably. <laughs> but then, get to be, only if we could be twin owls together. Because I'm also obsessed with her, so. <laughs> That's what I'd like.
Okay, this is random, but what object would it be hardest to go without? For example, phone, makeup, iPod, etc. Probably, probably a phone. I mean, even when I'm at work, like I'm getting texts from my boss from her office saying, like, "Oh, can you go do this?" and blah 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 blah. Um, I think about that all the time. Like, what would I do if I didn't have my phone? I wouldn't be able to function really at work, and then have a like public fun life outside of work. So, but my phone doesn't have internet on it, which is why I'm not very good at like Twitter and all that stuff. Um, yeah. I'm, I get to tweet every once in a while. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> when did you first realize how insane the Star Kid fans are? They're really not that insane. I mean, like I was saying, I used to love NSYNC so much. I used to go home and, like, um, I would, like, lay in my bed and, like, think of this movie in my head that I wrote in my head. It was, like, a, it wasn't even a movie. It was, like, a series, like, a seven-year-long series about me and Chris Kirkpatrick and how we would finally fall in love one day. <laughs> and I would go on tour with NSYNC. And I had my own, like, bunk bed on the tour bus. And, like, they were all my best friends. And, like, you know, I would hang out with JC when I was sad and be like, you know, I liked, I don't know if I like Chris or what. So sorry. Probably because I was telling that embarrassing story and then the computer like, all right, I'm cutting this off. Yeah, I can't see the video. I can hear you. can't see. The, your video is popping up and then disappearing and then there's, like, a picture of your face. <laughs> Your That's awkward. Brian! <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, I don't want to hang up on you. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> Hold on, let me ask Brian if he's right outside the door. Brian? Brian, will you help me? Brian! Matt? Brian, What's wrong with you? What do you need help with? The video disappeared. Only it's my video, not hers, because I can see her. Oh. Am I dumb? No. Let's see if it works. I'm so embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. I had to have her walk me through, like, how to use this via Facebook. Huh. Yeah, it's just going to be working. Can she hear what we're saying? Can you hear what we're saying? Yeah, hi. <laughs> um, all right, hold on. Let me let me hang up and then try this again. I can see you now. You can? Yeah. Hook your head, Brian. Hi. hi. <laughs> well, get out of here. All right, you kids, be good. <laughs> hey, um, do you want to go to June's birthday party? Maybe? Yeah. Okay, get out of here. Right. Doing a thing where his arm is still hanging in the door. <laughs> Eye is closing. Can you see him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, get out! I, I think I was telling you about NSYNC and now I'm embarrassed, so I'm not going <laughs> to finish it. But I just really liked NSYNC. <laughs> What is the coolest slash weirdest slash most memorable thing you've been asked to sign so far? Um, I signed some hands and arms and some programs. Oh, somebody had me sign their their iPod box. I I that was cool. That was pretty creative, I guess. What is the coolest slash weirdest slash most memorable thing you've been you've been given from a fan? Those Jim and the Pueblos t-shirts were really exciting because they're all bright colors and um, I liked them so much. And also Clark left his at my house, so I get it for now. So it's mine and it's green. It's good because it's the one I wanted secretly when he took it. But plus it was like a small and I ended up with a medium and I was like, Clark, like I should have that even though you are really skinny and hot. But <laughs> I want it. She's my friend, too, the one who gave you the shirts, Jenna. Oh, yeah. you, guys, uh, you guys are all friends. It's like a huge Twitter network. That's funny. I like that. Yeah. I like um, Twitter. How did Jim and the Povolos start? Um, Jim and the Povolos started back in, like, October. I started messaging everybody 
who now lived here and could sing and um, play instruments. And I was like, let's not make a band. And then um, some people were like, yeah, cool. And then I think our first rehearsal was just me, my roommate Laura, and um, Mark, the guitarist, and Clark, the keyboardist. And that was it. And then slowly it grew. Um, Imani started coming to a lot and Dylan. So that was pretty much the like first core group was like Dylan and Imani and Laura, Mark, Clark, and I. And then, um, and then we took a break during Starship because everybody was involved in Starship. And then um, after that, we picked back up and Brian was like, I really want to start being in the band. And um, Jamie was like, yeah, you want to be in the band? <laughs> and then um, Ariel always wanted to be in the band, but then she she wasn't living here till January. Anyway, so yeah, that's pretty much how it happened. And just a bunch of singers, and then us three instrumentalists. And then we got booked somehow for that Charlene K show, and we're like, I guess we should really practice and like try to sound good. So that's what we did. How did how was the name chosen for the band? Um, oh, I wish I had the Facebook thread. We were just writing back and forth about names that we wanted. And then I was like, we should just name it after Jim Povolo. And then they were like, yeah, like Jim and the Povolos. I think that was Ariel who came up with that. And then we we're like, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> that is all the questions I have. Cool. Yay. Did I do okay? I'm oh, so yeah. bad. <laughs> I really want to what your bottom DVD is. Which no, one? I want to know what the middle DVD is. Which one? Like, the one in the middle rack. This one? Right. Yeah. Uh, Shrek. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was where the wild things are. Oh, no, I don't have that one. I was trying really hard. Well, thanks for interviewing me. Oh, thanks for being interviewed. <laughs> Say that. And I'm sorry for losing your bracelet. It was really, oh, it was the best color. Like, everybody kept saying, like, what a great color. <laughs> it was, I'm really glad. I still have one on that somebody made that says Star Kid on it. Team Star Kid. And then Laura made me that one. She's my roommate. Cool. <laughs> I feel like my armpits smell, but you can't smell them because they're there and I'm here. Right. I am scum that I just stole from his stuff. <laughs> I feel like I should show you one more thing. This is his wallet. That's what his wallet looks like. So, that's good. Cool. Alright, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye! Bye! What do I press? I'm gonna press this. Okay. This is the button. This is it. Alright. Goodbye!